Welcome to the Low Carb Athlete Podcast, where we focus on discussing topics to help you burn fat, optimize health, and improve performance in life and sports. Transform the whole you from the inside out with the holistic method. Let's dive in. Here's your host, Debbie Potts. Hey, everybody. It's Debbie Potts doing a new health and fitness building episode of the Low Carb Athlete Podcast. And today, I'm going to share some ideas that we have from Ben Greenfield and our crew at Keon and other coaches put together a great list of ways you can stay strong while we're at home. As I record this, I have another month of staying here. It's April 16th in Seattle. We're probably going to be having the stay at home through middle of May. And I'm a rule follower and I don't trust anybody. So I'm staying home and I go for my exercise in the morning. I lift weights or do yoga. I don't lift weights. I don't have weights. I lift body weight and I have some light weights I talked about in a previous podcast. I have a just random core basically equipment and tubing and bands, rip trainers, stuff I have left over from the fitness studio I closed in, uh, when was that? September, 2019. So I don't have heavy weights. I'm dying, not lifting. And I hate not having, uh, it sounds funny, but I like having strong (laughs) muscles. I like having arms that are lean and defined. I don't like, honestly, having flabby arms. I feel self-conscious if I'm wearing short sleeves and no offense to people that do, but I don't like having, uh, I don't feel good without having some lean tissue, some muscle. I like having a muscular lean appearance. It's just my own thing. I feel better. So that can be taken however you want, but that's my own kind of way of me feeling good about myself and has nothing to do with anybody else. But I want to share a couple things. First of all, Peter Defty of Vespa and the Fat Optimal Fat Metabolism shared a great blog post today as I record this. It's exactly what I'm talking about. And yet I think we all need to work together to help spread the message that I keep talking about every single day. It is our own duty to protect ourselves from viruses as the COVID-19. It is only our fault. I just thought of this today. Is it your own fault if you get sick and react from the COVID-19? Does that mean you're irresponsible about taking care of the whole you from the inside out? People don't know if they're healthy on the inside unless they run functional lab tests. And I keep sharing the ones I recently did. I'm not healthy on the inside. I have found out I still have H. pylori that hides in the stomach wall, the organ in your stomach, and little squealy curly things that embed into the wall of my stomach. And a lot of people I've been reading have this, but they don't know it. I didn't know I have it. I have weird symptoms of fatigue, running, I can't lose weight, I have kind of feeling like exercise induced asthma when I run, my heart rate goes up high, Um, you know, my hormone test I got back from Dutch is all just incredibly low, even though I feel good, and it's just all this stuff, and so I feel obviously strongly, especially now as a nutritional therapy practitioner and a functional diagnostic nutrition practitioner where we focus on reducing external and internal hidden stressors by doing functional lab testing. And this is not selling me as a coach and for you to pay for me to help you out. It's just a mission. I challenge you to share this information to your community, your friends and family who are not healthy. Maybe they smoke. Maybe they don't exercise. Maybe they do exercise, but they overtrain. They have extra excess stress coming from their over-exercising under recovery, that's going to lower your immune system. So even if you are exercising, that doesn't mean you're healthy on the inside. Your immune system is 80% in your gut. And if we have excess stress from overtraining, from financial stress, from losing your job, from living nonstop with your family and your kids and homeschooling, there's a lot going on. 
So you're going to have extra stress. So that's why I recorded the exercise podcast last week about how we need to do less exercise, less high intensity and less, you know, two hour runs. And so anyways, Peter had a great vlog about uh, the COVID-19 and just what I keep saying. So he wrote, similar to why I'm saying that everyone in the world is going to have to do something to add their kind of self-defense. It's not the the virus isn't just going to go away. We're to, it's slowing down at least in Seattle because we're we're not going out to public. We're social isolating ourselves. Every business is practically closed. Everyone's out of business, bankrupt, can't pay their bills. It's mess. But it's not the only solution. We really have to empower people to take care of their wellness. And it's driving me nuts. Obviously, I'm getting on a rant. But we can only do so much hiding out in your house and not seeing anybody in person and social distancing yourself. And when you go to the grocery store, you know, we have our masks on and our gloves. That is what we need to do right now. But we also have to improve our health. The government doesn't have knowledge of health training necessarily. I don't like talking politics and I don't like getting into it, but really medical community doesn't have training in nutrition. And what Dr. or Professor Noak said to me today in a podcast we recorded is that, you know, they can't figure out how to treat COVID, but they don't have training in nutritional therapy work, which is the vitamin D and the IV of vitamin C. They don't have that training in medical school. There's no prescription and, and vaccine and, you know, all these different drugs that they can do to treat it. So maybe the solution is a nutritional therapy perspective to help people. So point is, I think, you know, we need to fight the COVID-19 by working on nutrition and lifestyle habits, repair your gut, improve your immunity and resiliency by starting on your gut health. How do you work on gut health? Well, reducing external stress and internal hidden stressors, because if we keep eating foods that we are reactive to, and that could be, you know, cauliflower, almonds, it could be avocado. You have to ideally do a food sensitivity lab to really know or measure your blood sugar if it goes up or if your heart rate goes up after you eat it or notice how you feel after you eat a food. That is one way we need to work on exercising less, that Goldilocks effect, not overtraining that will raise your cortisol because cortisol is up. The secretary IGA is down. So our first line of defense army members, the IGA in our gut wall lining is not going to be as supportive in our self-defense mechanisms. So really decreasing external stress is key to gut health. And we also want to eat low carb, you know, avoiding the processed foods, the sugars, the vegetable oils, the genetically modified foods, the foods that are contaminated with glyphosate, foods that are, you know, filled with just chemicals, garbage, processed foods, and, you know, reading the ingredients of food, you should be able to know what they are, you know, shopping on the walls that you have vegetables, protein, or healthy fat. You skip all the other stuff. And so I know you know that you're listening to the podcast, but I think the people that don't listen to this podcast are the ones that we need to reach out to and help. So that's a point for you to pay it forward, for you to go out and help your community just somehow, just ask people how they're doing. What are you doing to take care of the whole you? How are you doing with what you're eating? You know, are you, I know people drinking more, my family, <laughs> you know, they're joking about drinking alcohol at night and and I think it, it's something we need to be aware of. You know, eating out, supporting the local restaurants is important to small businesses. And I, I approve that and I, I promote that. But, you know, getting food to the grocery store that's not garbage. And most people, what did they go stock up on is garbage because it doesn't have a, a expiration date. <laughs> it lasts forever, right? So we're going to get that stuff. You're not going to get... Uh, vegetables because that's going to expire. So this is a great time to be keto carnivore and do more frozen meats that you can stock up on and bone broth and eat that. So 
what we want to do is help people ask them, are you doing everything right now? You can improve your gut health. You know, people don't maybe understand there's a microbiome, there's, you know, good bacteria. We want to add more diversity to it. We want to eliminate pathogens, different bad bacteria, this, you know, overabundance of E. coli, yeast infections, all this different stuff that can be in your gut that you don't know about unless you do labs because you may not correlate these symptoms of autoimmune issues, inflammation with what you're eating and your, the condition status of your gut, your train of your gut is damaged. So most people probably don't connect, make that connection, gut health and all these other symptoms, signs and symptoms of leaky gut. You can look up Dr. Amy Myers. She's got a ton of information. Dr. Mokola, everybody has a lot of information on gut health and leaky gut. And there's blogs every day coming into my email about immune health, resiliency, and you know improving gut health. So as I said, I'm not healthy under the hood. And people would totally assume I am, right? I'm exercising, I'm doing my yoga, I'm doing my outdoor sunshine walks in the morning at night, I'm doing my infrared sauna. I've been low carb for, I don't know, 15, 20 years. I avoid gluten and sugars and processed foods, vegetable oils. I mean, I'm doing all that, but because of my years of living life with chronic stress, and I had a ton of stress last year, closing my business that I had my fitness studio for 10 years, that set me back and had me in kind of a stressed out mode for a long time. So what comes back? My parasite and pathogens grows my H. pylori. So my point is to do functional labs with a practitioner that you can identify if you have some hidden internal stressors that you don't know about that are damaging your immune system and contributing to what we call an FDN metabolic chaos. So I, of course, go off on a tangent, but Peter Defty said a great list of things that I keep saying as well. He has a three-part steps in a blog he wrote. But step three, I was copying and pasting to my Facebook page, Low Carb Athlete, you can join or follow, like it. But step three is moving forward. Leadership is about empowering others rather than controlling them with fear. It is about balancing what is known to move forward into the unknown. What we do know, Peter writes, the virus does not kill truly healthy people. Densely populated places like airplanes, city sidewalks during rush hour, and large dense gatherings are much higher risk. Cold, overcast climates are conducive to the virus, while warm, sunny environments make the risk of transmission virtually impossible. Coronaviruses do not tolerate heat. People who succumb to COVID-19 have multiple core or multiple comorbidities, so other reasons that they're dying. Previous conditions. Number six, impaired cardiovascular function, function is extremely high risk due to COVID-19, being particularly virulent in, on hemoglobin. So the take home message is that COVID-19, this is Peter, not me writing this, I say the same thing, COVID-19 is here to stay. What's more is that there will be other viruses in the future, especially from the Chinese wildlife, wild animal live market. That was me adding that in. You, as Peter writes, can't wait for a politician or a vaccine. I keep saying this. So as my other guests on my show, nor do we need to because you are the solution. And he goes on to write three guiding principles, which is similar to what I talk about every day. We are bio-individuals. We need to take responsibility for our own health, our own well-being. If you get coronavirus, that's because you're irresponsible of taking care of yourself. You, didn't, you don't sleep, you go to bed late, you eat crap, you smoke, you drink too much. You know, you drink too much coffee, you don't get out and lift weights. I mean, there's all these things that people need to finally figure out that this is essential to health and well-being and protecting yourself from COVID-19, not a vaccine. So you are an individual, individual, you're meant to burn fat. You're not supposed to be burning sugar, metabolic flexibility we talk about. 
as Peter writes, is optimal fat metabolism, as he calls it, OFM. So the best defense is a strong offense. It's no longer necessarily just sheltering in place, social distancing. You know, these are strategies for right now, but they're not sustainable, right? He says, Peter Dufty writes the same thing. And this is just the message I really am passionate about sharing and getting out, but I can't do it alone. I have only so many followers and people that listen to my podcast, so I need your help to spread the message. So if we can just take ownership for health, but educate people with the tools, but keep it simple, eat real food, you know, use the... Vinny Tortage's word, NSNG, start with, you know, no sugar, no grains, get to sleep, you know, get eight, nine hours of sleep, but you can't you just fall asleep and get eight, nine hours, nine hours is creating a sleep hygiene. So listen to Dr. Bruce, the sleep doctor who I interviewed last week. And I've been posting my videos, a podcast, because I have recorded so many videos or so many podcasts that I'm good through about June. But if you go to YouTube, you can find the low carb athlete channel and find all the interviews on there. So I'm just pulling it up. Um, Let's see. But yeah, Dr. Bruce came out the audio version, but I'm also putting the videos and somehow I have Dave Matthews on my list here, but that's, I was listening to the NPR music, tiny dust concert, Dave Matthews as I was looking for stuff, but I have everything on here. Sun Lighten, Infrared therapy, huge to do right now. It's a great investment if you you know, can spend three, five thousand dollars or make a monthly payment, I think, on it. But I would look at Sun Lightens and listen to that podcast, and you can use my link on there so I get referral credit. Uh, Dr. Myhill has episode number 346 we did on the mitochondria ketogenic diet, but she talked a lot about coronavirus and doing IV of the vitamin C, which is sold out everywhere, but you know, you can get the cheap kind at the grocery store or order it online. Uh, I did one on sleep, but just talking about Ben Bickman, we did a podcast on insulin resistance, mitochondria, Professor Noakes, I talked to you this morning, so that's out. Just how chronic stress impacts everything too. So check it out. And for sure, Karan, who's been speaking about this stuff for 10, 15 years, the gut biome mitochondria longevity that is about the immune system and staying healthy. So, you know, you really want to work on your microbiome. I would look at my uh, full script page link I can send you on supplementation. You can order through me as a practitioner and get some good quality supplements. So the Megaspore Biotic, their mucosal barrier repair drink and their prebiotic, I add with my Keon Aminos and have that together. But Anyway, so let's go do some exercise tips here that we talked about with the Keon people. That was my rant for today. But the aminos are really important to take, especially for women and female athletes. We want to get more amino acids. So Dr. Stacy Sims says in her book, Roar, that we need about five to seven grams of amino acids before and after workout. And even women that are pre and postmenopausal need maybe that two more times a day. Also, I would focus on getting more of a higher animal fat and protein diet intake as we age and not able to tolerate carbohydrates as much. We're not carb sensitive as females, especially part of our female cycle. You can talk to or listen to my podcast with Kelsey Hess from Keon Uh, a couple months ago. We talked about women and fasting and getting our body or you know, getting the right foods. Kelsey has, but it was also Dina Griffin and I went deep into that topic as well. So aminos from Keon, I really like, not just because I've done Ben's Keon coaching and superhuman coach program, but you know, if you know Ben Greenfield, you know, he's just going to do the best quality ingredients. So the amino acids that he has are capsules or tablets, like very chalky because they're real branch chain amino acids or essential aminos that we need to get and supplement with we don't get enough from our we don't get it from your food so the one that i liked is a mixed berry powder and i mix that together and then i use that with my mucosal berry repair from microbiome labs and i use the prebiotics from microbiome labs to work in my gut health repair but also you know the focus is not to lose our muscles right now 
So the aminos are a great source because they're really not any calories. They absorb quickly and you know, when you're eating real food, it takes longer, obviously, to break down a steak, for example, than just taking amino acids can be absorbed 30 minutes before a workout. And, you know, real food is going to take hours to digest. So getting good quality amino acids, I think, is key. There's, um, you know, lysine in it, methionine, phenylalanine, theranine, tryptophan, leucine, which is a big one that Dr. Stacy Sims says women need even more so for protein synthesis, blood sugar regulation, and growth hormone production. And isoleucine is helpful because it helps prevent muscle from breaking down during exercise, which could lead to faster recovery and is important for immune function, hemoglobin production, and energy regulation. So really important, I think, right now to help our muscle repair and avoiding muscle loss by taking the Keon aminos and doing kind of what I'm doing, mixing it in with a gut healing protocol, make it a good all-in-one. I also been adding L-carnitine and creatine that Keon now sells and I do a D-ribose. So I get those from one of the companies I order supplements from as a practitioner and I make this super mitochondria gut healing and muscle building <laughs> recovery drink that's actually doesn't taste too bad so why do we need amino acids why do we need to take some creatine and aminos right now to maintain and build your lean muscle so ben wrote us a great blog that kind of explains why especially endurance athletes, we need more protein. And I think women need more protein. So we're doing this endurance training. You know, we're doing a lot of long bike rides, a lot of your, you know, long distance runners, but it's hard to get enough protein. And as Ben says in this article, if he overconsume protein before a race, his performance would plummet because he would feel sluggish and tired. And if he'd eat too much protein after a race, he would have digestive issues because his body can break it down and you only can break down 20 to 30 grams of protein at once and you can't digest your food in your sympathetic nervous system. You have to be parasympathetic. So if you're eating after a race, well, you're probably, you know, adrenaline's high. You're not going to be able to break anything down. So we need liquid nutrition so it can absorb and break down quickly in your body. So we really want to optimize our performance right now, right? We want to stop losing muscle. I want my arms to stay long and strong and, you know, my biceps look fat and flabby and I hate that. <laughs> so it's like a secret mission of mine. But we really need to work on lifting heavy. I'm going to, I wrote a blog I'll add to this today, but, you know, having that protein before and after your workout Figuring out how to work out at home that you can, you know, lift heavy. You know, I'm doing yoga. I've been posting which yoga videos I'm doing on my Facebook Low Carb Athlete page. I'm not so good at Instagram for that stuff or doing any Twitter, which I guess I have to do Twitter now too. I hate doing too much social media. It drives me nuts. But... Yoga, it's strengthening. It's hard. My legs are dying. I'm doing a lot of my damn dog and chaturangas and warrior positions and binding and arm behind me, grabbing my other hand and just all this twisting and turning, which is awesome, but it's not enough. I need heavier weight. So what can you do to keep your muscles from disintegrating as I feel right now? <laughs> it is doing some heavy lifting like Neil my husband just got a truckload of gravel this week that he's going to work on the house in the backyard and finishing some projects as the weather is now springtime so I'm thinking in my head oh I might actually help him for once in the yard because my arms are going to get a good workout so thinking gravel into buckets and doing from farmers carry I actually thought of um I've been saving the laundry detergent container and I'm going to fill that up with dirt or sand and somehow make it heavier. I am 
going to do maybe the wheelbarrow. I think he has a wheelbarrow there and fill that with the gravel and do, I told him I'd help him for an hour. So I get an hour workout. <laughs> so that was my solution. I am doing stuff at home that I, I need to do some videos for people, but uh, planks, you know, you can do planks, side planks, rotating plank to push up. I have these mover pads or you can use a towel. Uh, that I did a single leg lunge. Luckily we have wood floors now. We just got put in downstairs here last year. That's why it's so echoey in my office now. But we got rid of a dirty gross carpet to have wood floors. And now it's actually good. We can use the ab wheel. I can use ball and do crunches off the ball or pike plank push-ups and all this stuff. So there's a lot of strengthening you can do. But adding the amino acids and creatine now that Keon has is maybe something we should do especially as we're not going to the gym and if you don't have access to heavy weights as myself I don't have anything more than these little five pound weights I've had I think since high school somehow I still have them and I have these little three pound plotty weights which did work good today lying face down the bench doing reverse YTIs kind of extensions but besides that it's really hard to <laughs> get too much more out of that than different techniques you could do. So you can going really slowly, you can like hold, like I've been doing these three pound weights, doing arm circles, holding my arms, going halfway up and down and different things you can do. And Keon on Instagram, other Keon coaches have been posting workouts and they're doing a little movement challenge on there. I somehow have this thing against videoing myself because I'm self-conscious of what I look like, but <laughs> I should just get over it and be real and authentic but you know doing body weight stuff push-ups dips lunges squats you know getting if you don't have weights like i just said using rocks or you know filling up containers buckets laundry detergents and making them your weight so you know you can get to fatigue they're saying do a little more repetitions uh maybe do more sets like a tabata timer that you do eight sets of 20 seconds doing bands, TRX, you know, the ankle bands, rip trainer I have, but the bands I call the Stroops bands are these orange bands that hook up to a wall or you can loop them around something. But those are really good for, you know, all sorts of exercises and supplementing with eating more protein, making sure you're getting enough in your diet is 1.6 to 2.2 grams per kilogram of body weight. The creatine and essential amino acids will help muscle protein synthesis. So there's great links in my blog I put in there. I'll attach to this, but remember amino acids are the building blocks of protein. And they have, as they say, they serve as a catalyst for nearly every chemical process in the body. There's 20 amino acids in total, but nine of them that are classified essential that they're ones the body can't produce that we must acquire through our diet. That's why we need to supplement the stuff we can't get in from our body doesn't make it. And so we have to get from our food and it's hard to eat enough protein and digest it all. And especially you have H pylori or poor stomach acids, you're not going to be able to break down your protein very well anyways. So if you can't break down your food and you can't absorb the nutrients because you have damaged gut wall lining, well, liquid, nutrition is better because it doesn't have to be broken down. So I've been trying to do more of the liquid shakes, as I said, like my mitochondria muscle building drink and mucosal repair of my leaky gut. And remember, most everybody has leaky gut. It's just what level of damage do you have in your gut? So you can do lab tests to find out more, but assume you do have gut health problems and work on improving that microbiome and your intestinal mucosal barrier and get that stronger by doing uh, microbiome labs supplements. I have a list of ones in my full script account you can get it access to as a listener or a client of mine. But the Keons, aminos, I for sure, you know, essential amino acids to help build and maintain our lean muscle right now. It's a quick, fast way to get it. And then the new one is a creatine, creatine. And that helps reduce post-exercise fatigue. It helps promote athletic performance and muscle mass and strength. So I used to think of that as just for bodybuilders, but I've been taking it more because I've learned 
It has other benefits, not just for bodybuilding. So it helps the brain function is one thing I keep reading about why I started taking it, but animal products are the primary dietary source of creatine. So if you're vegetarian, you're not getting it either. But it's shown that helps for memory and intelligence. So we really want to add some creatine in there as we get older and helps age-related muscle loss in older adults. So as aging and reduced physical activity naturally leads to decreases in muscle mass, bone density and strength, this adds the creatine helps prevent that loss of weakness and mobility. So we don't wanna have our older friends and family members increase risk of falls and injury, we wanna help prevent that. So creatine supplementation can help maintain muscle mass and improve the function of muscles as we age. And I'm all about improving the aging process. So check all that out in the blog. And if you uh, let me know what questions you have for workouts, I will try to get creative and post them on the Facebook page, Low Carb Athlete. You just have to go on there and ask me and I'll see what I can do. All right, any other questions, just reach out, debbiepons.net. Have a great day and let's help get everyone healthy in the world. And we have to start by defining what health means. That includes your gut health, not just staying away from people. So thanks for following me and enjoying the show and keeping up to date on all of this information we keep coming out with. All right, chat soon. Thank you for listening. Thanks for listening to the Low Carb Athlete Podcast. If you have any questions, feedback, or topic suggestions, let us know on Facebook or at DebbiePotts.net. You can help us to continue to grow by leaving a review on iTunes. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time.